Hi everyone, uh, this is Donnie again. This is part two of the series I was doing on just comparing the user interfaces uh, between Ether and Patchwork, the client that was running on the Scuttlebutt network. So I've done the first video already. Went better than I thought. I didn't at least I didn't have to cut everything and um, edit everything out. I managed to do it all in one take. So let's hope I can do the same with this one. Um, I'm not going to go into the technicalities of the protocols and uh, how the peer-to-peer -peer networks work. There's quite a lot of documentation about that and I will put links below the videos uh, for those that are interested. This is more just to give a sort of feel of what the interface looks like and how it works. So what you're seeing here is the, the main view for uh, the Ether client. I've downloaded the snapshot version and running it on Linux at the moment. But there is versions for Windows and for Mac OS as well. Just to remember, as I pointed out in the other video, with these peer-to-peer -peer networks, the fingerprint ID is the unique uh, identity on whichever machine you've installed. So uh, if you've installed it on Mac OS and on Linux, they can have two different fingerprints. It's, the network actually sees them as two completely separate clients. Although the usernames are not unique, so you can still call yourself Darny on both of them. Um, you may want to say Darny Mac or Darny Linux just to differentiate if you feel the need for it. But remember, they're actually effectively two separate uh, identities. It is also nice in another way in that your username is never taken. Um, so if you want to know, of course, if it, which Darny it is or which John it is, if you hover over the names, often you can see the gravatar and the fingerprint ID. That will help just verify. Also, just remember on Ether, on this network, there is no following of individual profiles or people, and you don't message people either. You basically are participating in these uh, subreddits or topics or channels or whatever you want to call them, very much like the Reddit network. And all your interactions are around the, the interest or the topic itself. So this is what you're going to see. Uh, this is the home view at the moment. Basically, this is the view of everything that I've subscribed to, all the topics or my subs uh, that I've subscribed to and I could also go and have a look and see what are the ones that I've subscribed to and I can unsubscribe there if I want to. Um, the view is a little bit different, it's not the same sort of feed with the previews that you saw on, um, what was it, Patchwork. Uh, it, 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 it is essentially, this is the feed, but same thing if you go into the topic like say technology, you'll see a similar sort of view, just a quick preview of the actual topic. You've got to click on the topic then to open it and view. And you're going to notice immediately already, like you saw on Patchwork, I had that sort of preview of the, of the image, you don't see it here. Um, and I'll, I'll show that when we do a, a post edit, you can just see what's going on over there. The slight difference. Um, within an actual topic, if I have to take, say for example here, this is a, a, a subreddit that I created myself. I've got notification, uh, notifications activated, that's where I'm going to post a new post in here if I wanted to. These are the posts I've already done. This is what you do for liking. You can't unlike. Notice, um, can I? Un oh, I can. So you can. You can. Oh, now look what I've done. Hmm. I've disliked my or voted down my post, and it doesn't look like I can vote it back up again. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. There's something interesting. But essentially, once you've liked something, uh, here we are. There it is. And it's not that obvious. You'll see totals over here for the number of likes or. In this case, now a minus one. Mm. The other interesting thing here is that we didn't see on, on Patchwork and Scuttlebutt so much is because it's topic-based, there's also a bit of info you can put in around to the topic or the channel. Uh, so you can give it a description. There's a link. You can see who created it. There's reports. This is something unique now, mod activity. This is unique to, to, uh, to the Ether network in that you, you can see everything that the moderator does. So in this case, I've performed a few moderation actions. Anybody can see what I did, that I deleted it, what the reason was. Um, there's the mod actions. So moderations are completely transparent, which is just about unlike any other network. Um, even on WhatsApp, you're just going to see the word deleted. It doesn't tell you why or what's happened or who deleted it. In this case, you can see who did it, why they did it. 
and you can you'll be able to in the future it's not quite live yet but you're going to be able to in the future there's a democracy around moderators you can vote moderators out you can vote moderators in you can actually impeach the moderator even who created the channel he can be voted out or she can be voted out if they are not adhering to what well, the followers feel they're not adhering to to what the the purpose and the the uh, what was it the yeah, the tension was behind the the channel and its and its sort of rules so that's something quite unique i think um, for this network um yeah that that was the home view i showed you already then popular is quite interesting as well it's just showed these are not necessarily things that you've subscribed to but it shows you what's popular on the network and again very nice for just for discovering new content and and uh, topics and subs to follow new is also an interesting view new is sort of like a raw view of literally a chronological order of everything new has just been posted so it'll include replies test posts uh, all sorts of things. Um, I, I use this quite a lot just to have a look at, at what, what's recently happened on network and maybe not for things that I'm even following but then I'll jump in and maybe participate in that particular topic as well. Um, they've got a search function here so you can search for communities like this. Oops. I keep forgetting I've got that on. Uh, it's going to find that, or you could search for content. Uh, let's try something different. Um, let's see if cellular has been mentioned. Yeah, okay, there's something there. And also, you can search for uh, people. So we've covered the, the moderator function already and the, and the topics. I'm going to briefly go then also to posts and just show you, uh, I just wanted to show you quickly, I forgot to actually mention on the moderate, you'll just see, if you're looking at something you can moderate, you'll see you've got a moderate function over there as well, where that, that's actually where you do the, the deletion. And that copy link over there is going to be to post a, a link externally if you wanted to share it outside of the network. I understand that it's sort of, it's not a, a fully public or a fully functional uh, permanent feature, but um, it's something quite useful because people often want to share, reshare outside somewhere. Um, I've got the hashtags. Hashtags here in this case are not, they'll, they'll be searchable. They form, perform a search function. They're not like with patchwork where you use a hashtag. It also creates that, that topic or uh, gives that post a presence in that topic. That's not the case here. You actually are posting within a topic. Uh, you're posting a new thread. And then let me show you quickly how to do new thread because it's interesting to see how the markdown works here. So as I said in the last video, markdown is standard across um, the various social networks and, and um, say compatible applications. So you, once you've learned it in the one, you can use it in, in any of the others. What I've done is I've taken the same post that I posted in Patchwork and I'm going to paste it in here. And before I go and move the stuff around, let me just show you here. There is also a preview function with Ether. If you look up over here, and by the way, you'll see you've got about 20,000 characters that you can use in a, in, a, in a post. There's your markdown preview. You click on it and now you'll see the hash for a heading. It shows a heading there the underscore for emphasizing or italics there you can see it the double asterisk for bold there you can see it over there there was the link that i put in and there are the two hashtags now you'll see here is one of the differences i was speaking about on patchwork you would have seen a preview of the actual image pulled in that's not the case on on ether what you do on ether is you can you can put an image in over here you can copy the 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 address the url in for the image including whether it's a jpeg or a png the only problem is it'll only preview if if it's an image gif or video and it is it is on a whitelisted host which is these three over here if you've uploaded it to that location and pasted the location in it will preview in the post the problem with that is though is 
in terms of copyright you can only then upload images that you own or that are open uh, creative commons uh, with or without attribution or whatever the case is you can you can put that in and it'll work mm -hmm. but if you wanted to reference an image for example that's on a on a website or it's copyrighted that's going to be a problem you can put a link into the article but it it won't do a preview so I often will put the link in it the, the the link to the actual article I'll put in here you'll have to click on it to view it it's not going to show you any preview um, that that's the only sort of one key difference yes they could actually add more whitelists here uh, or allow the functionality down here just to pull the image in um, but that at the moment is a is a is is a function of how Ethernet uh, operates so it's just one key difference to to bear in mind and then of course the title, uh, I will normally, for Ether, I will normally just take my title and paste it in over here. So I'll show you how I do that there. I will just take that and I will paste it in. And then bearing in mind that our image is not going to be able to preview. I don't have this image uh, in one of the whitelisted sites. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that address to the article and I'll paste it in over there and then obviously in this case I'm just gonna have to clean up a little bit over here now if one does the preview you're gonna see not very much you won't see the whole article obviously because the it's not previewing the title anymore um, but I can show you the posts you're not going to be able to it'll it's basically a link you'll have to click on over there so it's just one sort of key difference in terms of the typing side um, to bear in mind And then just two last things to mention about the network. Um, the content, because it's being stored on everybody's machines and forwarded, you, yes, you can actually work offline and connect and forward later, almost like email. Um, that's one nice thing. You, you, the internet can actually be off and you can browse this network and reply and post and catch up later. Uh, it's the same with patchwork. But built into Ether as well is the data basically disappears after about six months or so if it hasn't been interacted with or saved. Um, it's just to keep things clean because remember it's replicating between machines. If it gets bigger and bigger and bigger over five or six, seven years, it's going to become tremendously big. One nice thing of course with peer-to-peer -peer networks is unlike a centralized server, because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, if you've got 500 users today and 1,000 tomorrow and 5,000 the, the next week, it scales with the users. Uh, in essence, you're sharing that, that storage space between the machines. There's no one central server where somebody must upgrade the hosting capacity. And so for, from that perspective, these networks can operate quite a lot cheaper and easier maybe than, than a centralized network. If you've got problems with outages on the internet, same thing. You can edit and do your posting and, and so on um, offline. In fact, I think the developer for, was it Scuttlebutt or Patch, Patchwork? I can't remember which one of the two. He'd actually designed the software for the purposes of himself being on a sailing boat sometimes for a month at a time. And he would actually work offline and when he got to port or when he had internet connectivity, he would push and pull and, and update in that sort of manner. So that, that's an advantage. One other just last thing I want to show on, on Ether is the status. You can actually see the status of the network. There's some nice technical info for those that are interested. It shows you what's up to date. What I think it shows storage here somewhere. It's showing at the moment. Oh, that's the allowed space. I'm just trying to have a look. Actually, not too sure now where it's actually showing the space already used. Um, I need to check that. But anyway, and there's there's a bit of information as well here about what it's telling you. So I think for the the technical fundies, this is quite interesting actually. Um, and we've had quite a bit of luck. Um, on the technical side with being able to edit configs and, and various things on Ether. So I think from that perspective, Ether is uh, quite interesting from the sort of the technical edge, I think. I think I'd already showed the profile. Okay, it's got a pro there is a profile as well. Um, but as I said, it's you'll see there's nothing really for messaging or anything over there. It does show you just briefly notifications, unread is bold. Uh, you can see all the posts I've made. and threads that I've created. You'll see again there are no images at the moment. You might see one or two just now. I know I had tested somewhere here with, with images. 
Oh, okay, there we go. For example, this was an image for uh, the topic group that I created actually. Uh, this one was a post image and you can see how you can see it. There you'll see it is Imgur, so it is uh, one of the whitelisted sites, but that's essentially how you're going to see a, a post made with, with an image. And yeah, I think that's about it for Ether. Um, not sure what else I can actually show there at the moment. Oh, maybe just topics. I can just show you sort of what what is available. Um, browse communities. There we go. Uh, by default, I can also just say there it's got safe the creator flags um, topics or communities as safe for work. It's called. And they will always appear first and by default that's all you see there is a switch you just have to switch on to see the non safe for work uh, and you can mail him and ask him please flag mine as safe for work and it'll appear in the safe for work but if you're not seeing everything that's one of the reasons why because it's actually in the uh, unsafe for work you're not going to see it here because i've got it switched on by default i've, I've allowed uh, non safe for work so i'm obviously seeing everything but you'll see there's quite a lot of um, communities on ether already and you can take any one of these uh, let me just go down a little bit you can take any one of these I'm just looking for one that's got uh, well there's mine obviously you can already see 12 I think that's 12 posts eh? and replies I'm not subscribed to this one for example but I can go in and you can already see these are the different topics that have been posted and there's one of course with a with an image And that's how you're going to see that there's an image so yeah very interesting it's also a lot of fun um, I must say these these communities and these networks uh, people tend to be a little bit more on the technical side but I was surprised I saw discussions taking off around trees and mushrooms and all sorts of other interesting things so you know it's up to you you make you make of it what whatever you whatever you participate in really at the end of the day uh, people must just remember there are topics community based type networks so you've got to find interesting communities or cre create them yourselves like I did for my traditional shaving one and people you'll you'll make friends as people find the same topics of interest that you've got it's a it's a different type of of network from ones where they pro like Facebook where it's primarily face uh, following people uh, Twitter you also follow a profile uh, although they have also now introduced topics and so on but it's still quite new for them so uh, yeah that that's pretty well much ether if there's anything else i discover i'll, I'll do a follow-up video sometime but you, you were, you're welcome to ask questions in the video or to uh, catch me on ether and you could ask me questions uh, i'm trying to think there's my there's my address yeah so we'll, i'll see if i if there's enough interest i'll do some follow-up videos again Otherwise, that's about it for now. Thanks very much and cheers to all.